welcome to Celluloid Mirror. I'm your hostess, Betty St. Laveau. On this TV show, we talk about film history, film definitions, and then we go straight into the movies, which is what we are going to do today. So I thought long and hard about this episode. At first, I was going to compare Willow, Legend, and Lady Hawk, um, simply because I was sat down by uh, for, for all three of them, number one. And number two, they all have uh, similarities, either involving some type of mythical creature or um, it's a kid-themed. However, when watching these movies, they have a lot of violence in them. So I want to discuss the fact that you can be a kid of a certain age and watch Lady Hawk, Legend, and Willow, but maybe not so young. Plus, Willow, directed by George Lucas, had so many fights in it that I finally try to remember who, who produced it. I knew that Ron Howard had directed it, and usually he doesn't I involve so uh, big, big screen thrills. But then when I checked that Mr. Lucas had produced it, it made sense to me. So I think we'll do those shows another time. As it is, I switched gears last night and still kid-themed, but again, it, not in adult fashion. Um, when we watch horror movies, where the child is a villain, they appear to be more scary than movies where there is the adult villain because children are naturally cherubic, innocent, etc. You would never expect a child to be evil. So um, today we're going to study and check out uh, Orphan, The Good Son, and the big daddy of all time, The Bad Seed, which is a very personal favorite of mine. So let's start off with Orphan. This was directed by Jean Colette Serra, and it starred Vera Farmjima, Peter Sosgod, Isabel Furman, who did an excellent, excellent job as the villain, CCH Pounder, Jimmy Bennett. Okay, so the premise of this movie is, is that a couple's having some marital problems. They already have two children, and they decide to adopt a uh, orphan from the um, uh, from Eastern Europe. So orphan groups were, um, they didn't like the premise of the movie. And so there's a disclaimer, at least, a very, uh, I'm positive at the end of the movie, saying that um, this movie in no way reflects what usually happens if you adopt someone from Eastern Europe. Now, this is just a movie, okay? So movie people know that's just a movie. All right, so the orphan, Esther, who they adopt, happens to have a few very chilling secrets. So what I noticed, what I really liked about this movie was that the actress, Isabel Furman, who played the ch evil child, was credible. She was believable. Um, I think that with some movies, uh, when you have a child playing someone who is slightly um, younger, they get an older child uh, for some reason, I think, because that way the child is understanding direction better. At any rate, um, I find that most child actors play parts like this with a startling maturity. To quote the ex-boyfriend, child stars get a break. He wasn't really interested in Hollywood one bit, but he would never make fun of Danny Bonaduce or any other child search. Um, and this is because child stars undergo a lot of stress and they work very hard. Now, um, Ms. Furman, in one interview that I saw her and another um, that I read, seems to be a very stable individual and I bless her parents for that. She seems like she's doing fine with whatever rigors Hollywood throws her way. So. Um, I give kudos to her, and she made this movie extremely scary. Now, it didn't get very good reviews. Um, for one thing, uh, most reviewers uh, got 57% Rotten Tomato score. And I don't really do Rotten Tomatoes, but I did notice the fact that um, they'll always been uh, Rotten Tomatoes, but with this source here, Wiki, um, they mention when a critic is especially negative. So some people found this exploitative. It is, it's exploitation filmmaking, I hate to say it. It's about child evil. And you're exploiting evil and children, okay? So it is exploitation filmmaking. I don't find it sleazy, but, excuse me, the sex scenes between Pierce Sarsgaard and Vera Fujima, I could do without, you know, the, the whole torture stuff. But the shocker, um, I thought the shocker was appropriate 
towards the end, and I found that this child was manipulative, um, charismatic, and uh, psychopath. All right, so please check that out. And it basically made something like, it opened number four at the box office, which I think is a really healthy opening. Um, it grossed uh, almost 13 million in total that weekend. And then it grossed a total of seven, 78, almost 78, uh, pardon me, yeah, $78 million, no, 78, yeah. No, well, I flunked algebra for a reason just now. Okay, so at any rate, it made a ton of money, all right? So um, there are several alternate endings to Orphan, um, which I found surprising because it seems like it's just about child evil, but they, uh, you know, studios sometimes uh, don't really, um, you know, sometimes nowadays they want the, the villain to win, so I'm not going to blow the ending there. Now, um, when we come to The Good Son, we're, we're working back chrono chronologically. Uh, Orphan is a 2009 movie, and The Good Son, starring Macaulay Culkin, I think that's like 98 or something like that. Let me see. Um, 93, even earlier. Okay, so this stars Elijah Wood, Macaulay Culkin, Wendy Crewson, David Morse, Daniel Hugh Kelly, Jacqueline Books, and uh, little Quinn K. Culkin as uh, uh, the good son's little sister. All right, so basically um, this is about a boy. He loses his ma. His pa, uh, the Elijah Wood, is, is the little boy who's the son. And David Morse, who I find an excellent, excellent actor, plays his pop. And they fly out to, um, he's got to go on a trip. I think he's going to, he's going overseas to Japan. And um, he's dropping Elijah Wood off at his cousin Henry's house, played by Macaulay Culkin. Okay, so <sighs> Henry is a full-on psychopath. Uh, there was a novelization of the movie trying to show where Henry's uh, uh, aberrant behavior came from because obviously everybody else in the family is sane and not psycho, okay? So Henry's type of evil consists in mechanical. He likes to build things. Um, he likes to destroy things. He's almost indifferent and cold to other, he is indifferent and cold to other people's suffering. Um, and I, I said that almost there because it, it's a little difficult watching the Home Alone kid playing a psychopath. Um, I don't really want to go into Macaulay's uh, family psychology here, but um, the pop did want his little sister to be in the movie and from an account I read, Quinn Culkin, the little girl, she hated, hated um, uh, acting. And so there is a brother of Macaulay and Quinn's who enjoys acting. I think he's a pretty good actor. I think, can't remember his name off the cuff. It might be Rory. But um, uh, you can see why the critics really didn't enjoy Macaulay in this ro role. And I think that Macaulay was sort of overdoing it. I don't think that he was directed in a sense that he could portray Henry in a believable manner. Um, again, you're just watching a cute Home Alone kid being a psycho and trying to be, he's uh, being cast against type here. So it's not an enjoyable movie in the sense. So you're very really aware of, that's Macaulay Culkin playing a bad kid. Now, uh, Orlando there, um, Oh, I would get Orlando Bloom and this other Orlando mixed up. The act, uh, the, the uh, um, Elijah Wood, I'm so sorry. I say I get Orlando Bloom and Elijah Wood mixed up, but this is why I get them mixed up, okay? Even though I find Orlando Bloom very handsome, they both do the wide eye thing. <laughs> pardon me. So it's, pardon me, it's Elijah Wood playing Henry. Okay, so um, I looked at Elijah Wood as, uh, again, 
he was a spectator watching Henry's badness and uh, psychopathicness and uh, what, to quote me Sister Laura, his evil machinations that he would do to people. So I found myself focusing on his facial expressions instead of believing that he was a kid terrified of his cousin. It was more like he was enjoying the Henry show. I'm so sorry. So there are some, the, the two child actors their, their performances are as good as they can be with the direction that they had, I'm sorry. So this type of movie to me isn't so much a chiller because you sort of know that's Macaulay Culkin being the villain. Um, I don't recommend it, but if you want to check it out just for some laziness, go ahead and do it, all right? And that particular movie, it didn't do that well with the critics, and I don't think it did that well at the box office either. I can get back to that in a little bit. Um, but the, the critics, I, I remember the critics didn't like it, and um, my men, Cisco and Ebert there, they found it downright creepy. Okay, so don't watch that tonight. So the last one that we're going to talk about today is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's Patsy McCormick playing the titular role, The Bad Seed. Okay, this movie came out in 1956, and it stars Nancy Kelly, Wil William Hoppe, Patty McCormick, Henry Jones, Eileen Heckart, Evelyn Barden, and some very other fine actors. So most of the uh, Broadway cast, uh, all the Broadway cast uh, were, was on build for the film, which was such a great um, delight for every movie goer because the director and the producers were like, we want to recreate what was happening on stage because that's, knew where the, that's where they knew the magic was. So if you watch Patsy McCormick's wonderful, wonderful mini documentary on YouTube, she talks about being in the bad seed and I think that she was in I Remember Mama or something like that over at another theater and so she was doubling she was doubling playing this part on Broadway and I think another role over or doing a radio show. All right, it's been a minute since I've watched the documentary. Um, I have it in my file. So um, when you watch Patsy McCormick's wonderful uh, documentary talking about discussing uh, what an exciting time it was for her and how she understood the part of Rhoda, that itself is a great movie too. Check that out. Okay, so... Um, when this movie would come on in the afternoon in Chicago, it was uh, it would inevitably at times come on when we were staying at my grandma's house in the summer. I don't really remember Ma having it on. And my aunties, who are 10 years older than me, they were teenagers at the time, they made sure we were always out of the room. Uh, and it was always one of the, those movies that I couldn't exactly read, but I could sense parental discretion is advised. That was back in the day when there were only three ne networks in UHF. So uh, they never let us watch it. And the reason why they didn't is because Rhoda, as a character, is one of those iconic villains that no one can ever forget. And this movie is best for adults, not children. The Good Son, I really don't want a 10-year-old watching it, but they'll know it's a Home Alone kid, okay? Orphan, I don't want a 10-year-old watching it, maybe a 12-year-old, but if the parents is around, I think that the child would get bored. With The Bad Seed, not only would a child enjoy watching it, because Rhoda Penlock, played by uh, Ms. McCormick there, is a squeaky clean, blonde, butter wouldn't melt in her mouth cute little girl and so a child would watch that movie thinking wow this is about a nice little kid and it's not about a nice little kid so um the um Rhoda is the type of child psycho that where you have Esther an orphan who's manipulative charismatic and charming and an opportunistic type of killer and on the other hand, you have Henry, who is sort of a lackadaisical type of killer, but when he hates, he really, really, really hates, and he'll decide to get rid of who he's hating. Rhoda is, uh, she can act at the spur of the moment, but she's very cunning, and she is the only planner um, in the group. So, um, I think Rhoda definitely plans her crimes much more than Henry or Esther do. So 
um, they all exhibit paranoia and um, there's always one parent conspicuously absent. With Rhoda, her pops away, so her mother Christine has to bear the brunt of discovering that her child's a monster. With um, the bad, oh, pardon me, with the good son, uh, Elijah Wood's pop is away. He would be the parent who could keep order, where else um, his uncle, Elijah Wood's uncle, is totally oblivious of his son's evil, and the mother is only um, kind of suspecting. Um, Rhoda's, Rhoda's pop is away, and uh, Elijah Wood's mom has croaked. And so there's always the parent who's like, where are they? So the children's victims are unprotected by the parent who could possibly keep order. Um, now, I had a really great comparison chart, and I think I pretty much hit it. Okay. So Rhoda doesn't divulge her crimes unless she is pressed, all right? Um, her, uh, when her crimes are divulged, it's because she's forced to confess. Um, with Henry Evans, um, he, um, he enjoys having his victims kind of squirm. He'll admit to what he's doing, but... Um, Unlike Rhoda, he seems to kind of enjoy confessing. And with Esther, she likes to make threats. Out of the uh, out of the three, she's much more secretive than the other two. Okay, so um, basically, I uh, want to say about all of uh, these three movies in general. Um, the earlier one is definitely much better made and much more well thought out and directed uh, are Bad Seed. Uh, Orphan, is, our latest one, is um, terrifying and scary. Modern, but it has some flaws, but you will totally believe the villain, the villain is really villainous. And it, with the middle son, uh, the middle one, the good son, um, you'll probably nod off after half an hour. All right, so... I think that's it for me today. I'm Miss Betty St. Laveau, and you've been watching Celluloid Mirror. I'd like to thank my crew at Orca here for their continued support, and Gendron Building, Quality in Concrete, for almost 45 years now, and uh, St. Laveau Consultations and St. Laveau Lemonade Company for taking time off and enjoying their time here articulating um, her first professor's uh, admonition to articulate and explanate the silver screen. My mother, Sharon Ardella uh, Warfield, um, Paris Ochisanya Claridge. Until next time, stay away from those bad movies. Ciao.